Welcome to the future Napier committee meeting. I have apologies from Councillor Taylor if I can ask for a mover. Moved by Councillor Crown, seconded by Councillor Mawson. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Uh, we have no public forums today. Any further announcements by Her Worship? There being none, we and no announcements by myself, I'll call if there are any minor matters that for discussion not on the agenda. There being none, I'll ask Darren if we have any announcements by management. Morena, for you, Madam Chair, yes, we do. I'd first like to invite Richard Monarchy, our recovery manager, to give a brief update on, on the recovery process. Um, thank you. Through the Chair. Um, I just wonder if, uh, with the indulgence of the Chair, um, feel free to ask me some questions about uh, the recovery update. As you can see, I've got an extensive presentation <laughs> available for you. Um, but um, what I wanted to um, uh, just kind of say is give the initial, I guess, give you an idea of where we're up to um, with the recovery. Um, we are looking to kind of formally structure it um, in, um, in the council. And it's quite hard because um, it's, you know, Everybody is is busy, um, and I, I think to um, you, you, you're sort of you're grabbing resources from other areas that are also um, needed. So uh, for us, um, it, um, as an organisation, you know we have to kind of prioritise um, the recovery as the highest thing, um, and uh, kind of have dotted lines throughout the organisation into. Um, helping us deliver on um, our recovery needs. And they're quite substantial and going quite fast. So we, we have to, um, at the moment, there is um, a, a need to, um, for us to get some sort of plan uh, together by the 28th of April to be able to feed into a regional and central government structure um, in terms of providing central government some idea of uh, what the big ticket items are really uh, for them to be able to help fund recovery for. Um, we had a really good meeting um, with our iwi partners yesterday uh, who are right on board with you know the urgency of getting that through and, um, and, had, and made some really good points about the sort of things that we should be looking at. Um, and in, in terms of that, uh, the process of recovery is complex and messy and quite long and difficult, um, and you tend to go down before you come back up. Um, but what's quite what, what's quite useful for us, I think, um, is and as we go forward, we'll try and articulate this in, in a little better. Is to think about what we're trying to do, what the problem is, a little bit that we're trying to solve through the recovery process. And I think um, it's really important in that regard to contextualise Napier um, when the event actually happened. And think about us ourselves as completely cut off from all our lifelines for um, a week and um, for 70,000 people, that's a completely unacceptable place, really. Um, and so that's the base, I guess, the, the something I'm trying to think about um, and um, perhaps something that we need to think about as a council is if we are going to recover, um, it's not about, you know, what the necessarily um, the damage that has been created, but it's actually getting the resilience so this never happens again. Um, not, or certainly not to that degree where all the lifelines are down. And we will, we will recall, um, in a way, um, how lucky we were that, um, you know, our, the Taradale didn't go under. It was very close <coughs> to going under. And I cannot imagine what that would have been like, what we would have done, um, you know, for our people uh, if that had happened. It was hard enough. <laughs> Uh, without that. Um, and also, I think, you know, if we take our minds back to that moment, um, what it felt like as the days progressed in terms of having no power, not having understanding the security 
of our food supply, our water supply, um, sewage treatment, all those sorts of things, and the unrest that was starting to happen in the community, those sorts of things. So I, I think it's, it's really important for us to be able to paint that picture that that is not an acceptable place for us to ever be in again. And so our recovery is about a resilience in a big way with, with that. Um, I think it's also, you know, about looking at those communities that have have been affected and really working hard. And I think that, that, that the um, elected members um, with us uh, are, re are really important here is to, is to work um, hard at understanding in quite a granular way what has, um, how they are affected. Um, and so, you know, those, those properties in Miani, our Awatoto industrial area, the effects of the sewage treatment plant, um, you know, uh, and going forward as well to um, create, I, I think, you know, as um, Councillor Crown pointed out, it's a big deal um, to have raw effluent going into the, into the um, sea for, for that amount of time. Those sorts of things, we need to kind of really get, um, um, I think we really need to understand how the community is, is feeling about those things and so that some of that can bubble through. Um, and once we understand that well, we will know, I think, how we can um, work uh, with the Crown um, and the funding agencies, and we will know what we're asking for in terms of uh, building resilience, but also meeting the needs of our community. So uh, that's where we're up to at the moment. We, we will structure something, and I'll, uh, as soon as I can, uh, put together something uh, uh, that gives, you know, put some black ink on um, some paper for you to uh, understand where we're going with this. But our burning platform at the moment is the 28th of uh, April, where we need to have a locality plan in place that is, as I say, geared mostly at uh, being able to give the Crown some idea of what the big funding ticket items are for us. Uh, thank you, Richard, and thank you for the opportunity to ask any questions. I will ask if councillors have any general questions on the recovery process. Councillor Bogue. Um, yes, um, thank you, Richard. With What's happening with the Redcliffe power station to make it more resilient? So this is exactly the sort of questions that we will need to be asking in, into the future. So it's, it's the Redcliffe's power station, um, it's the transport links, um, it's the it's the uh, cell phone towers, it's uh, our own water supply, um, it's uh, uh, the solid waste. All these things um, are things that we need to advocate for or do ourselves if, if necessary. And that's, that'll be the process going forward, you know, in terms of, of making sure that those things are not failing uh, next time. Just continuing, is the Redcliffe substation in operation now? I, I'm not over that, sorry. I don't know how they've geared that, whether they've gone around it or... I don't think it, I'm not, don't think it is, but yeah. Thank you. Mia Wise. Thank you, through the Chair, and not so much a question, just um, to provide a little bit more detail uh, around the locality planning. So we will be arranging four community meetings, uh, not next week, but the following week, to engage with um, our communities on this so that they can feed into that initial locality plan due on the 28th of April. And the focus of this first locality plan is the short term, so it's mm. the next sort of six months through to August, and then we will be actually preparing a second plan which is more around the medium and long term um, recovery and what our needs are there. So there will be a number of opportunities throughout that second phase as well um, for our community to engage and have input in the process. Mm. And if I can just add to that. The, um, the locality plans sort of will come together as a region. Um, that's, uh, and um, so they will, it'll be a kind of like an integrated package that is, is presented at, at this first step. And the, 
what uh, the guidance is that it is um, is geared. This first one is geared to what to to getting back to getting things back to how they were. So not better how they were. That was that's the, that's this first tranche. Okay. Thank you. That's really helpful, Richard. And I suppose just acknowledging that we've got I think three short weeks in between now and the 28th mm -hmm. uh, with some public holidays in there. So just acknowledging you've got a, a lot of work um, in those intervening weeks. And um, I know from around the, the council table there's a lot of desire to be involved at that mm -hmm. governance level of, of developing that locality plan along with the community. So um, appreciate the work that you have ahead of you. Thank you. Any further management updates? I do. This one is about our council officers. The elected members may recall that for the last few years that we've been competing in the management challenge nationally. Uh, we do have a team this year again who are going to be competing in May. I just really want to acknowledge that they were a bit apprehensive about doing it this year because of all that's happened in the last seven, eight weeks, but they've, they've dusted themselves off and they're going to give it <coughs> their best shot to retain our national championship. So I thought it was really important to acknowledge that they're, they're going to give it a go for us this year. Awesome. Fantastic. I think there's lots of general nods of support for that. Thank you. Uh, I'll move on to our first item and I'll welcome Luke. Thank you, Luke. Uh, if you'd like to take us through our, our first and only item on our agenda, our Resource Consent Activity Report. Uh, kia ora. Um, this is the first report we've obviously had since uh, the pre-elections uh, July last year. So it's an eight month update. So we've seen quite a bit of activity in that period. Um, I do note that the resource consents that have been received by Council over that time have uh, decreased in comparison to the same 12 month period uh, one and a half years ago uh, by approximately 4%. Um, our assessments are still being completed within, uh, on, on average, within 17 business days, which is still uh, very reassuring. And, uh, and encouraging um, the mix of developments that we've been seeing as well within those applications received is still approximately 55% land use and 45% subdivisions. Um, given the length of the report, um, I will take it as read um, and I welcome any questions that you may have on those, um, on those applications that have been listed. Thank you very much, Luke. I'll open to if there's any questions from the committee. Uh, Councillor Crystal. Um, just in relation to the Harding Road, um, has the um, Section 95 notification been um, done? Uh, through the Chair, no, that hasn't been completed as yet. The um, Assessing Officer has issued a Section 92 uh, information request um, in relation to heritage matters, um, written affected persons uh, forms um, and a few other items that the applicant has yet to respond to. So no, it has not been completed. Thank you, Luke. Uh, if there's no further questions, Luke, I just have a question. It's probably more a, a generic one. Just if you had any um, comment on the effects on applications for resource consent following the cyclone, um, noting that a number of works might be done under emergency provisions, and I'm sure your team is across that. Do you have any sort of general comments for the committee that they might find useful? Um, with respect to works being done under the, you know, under the provisions that they've impl uh, Im imposed as a result of the cyclone, we, we haven't seen too much, no. Um, our processing officers that manage the resource consenting team single-handedly, uh, Briar Smith and um, Christina Bunny, whilst uh, the other planners were in the EOC, um, did a phenomenal job. They were, um, they were required to extend timeframes, um, which is permitted under the Act. Um, but no, we, we've continued processing as you know, business as usual, just with some extended timeframes. Perfect. And you're now up to processing capacity like you were pre-cyclone, so giving businesses those certainty, is that? Yes, we at? are, generally, yes. Yeah, there have been a few that have carried over from that cyclone period, that response period, but um, any, anything received moving forward from now, um, we are well and truly on top of. Fabulous. Thank you to your team that I know worked really hard to, to accommodate some quite difficult circumstances over that time. So, um, If there's no further questions from the committee, I'll ask for a mover to the report, moved by Councillor Bogue, seconded Councillor Crystal. 
Um, do either of you wish to stay, Councillor Bowes? Yes, I just did not particularly comment favourably on the um, Kainga Ora and K3 applications for 112 um, units of social and public housing. Um, it's very enheartening because, as we know, we've got 707 households on our social housing register and many people living in motels. So um, just historically, we lost, I think it was nearly 100 housing units in 2011 in Marae Nui, and there's still a lot of empty spaces there. And it's great to see this application covering new um, housing, public housing for those, for those gaps. So um, it's very encouraging to see 112 housing units being planned or applied for here. And what that means is um, people out of motels and um, an improvement in the well-being of the most vulnerable members of our community. So I fully support um, this resolution. Thank you, Councillor Bowe. If there's no further comments, I will put the resolution. All those in favour of receiving the report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. I will close our meeting and we will do our closing karakia. <coughs> Thank you, everyone.